is it possible to eat over 4,000 calories every single day and still stay shredded? Well, yes, of course it is. And in today's video, I'm going to show you my exact method for eating a ton of food and staying really lean. Now you might be thinking, if I eat a ton of food, then of course I'm just going to get fat. And no, that is not the case. This is why we do something that is called reverse dieting. When we reverse diet, we slowly build up calories and allow our metabolism to adapt and adjust to the amount of food that we are feeding it. And during this time, what happens is the body is very good at being really responsive to what you give it. And as we give the body more food, it adapts and allows us to not get fat and it converts them calories to extra muscle mass. You just have to do it correctly. So let me show you my three proven methods for staying real lean and eating a lot of food. If you've dieted for quite a long amount of time, let's say 12, 16, 20 weeks or even more, I guarantee that your metabolism has slowed down in order to slow down the fat loss process. This is what happens. This is why the leaner we get and the longer we diet, the harder it becomes to lose fat. At the end of the day, the metabolism is very, very smart and is designed to maintain body weight. So we have to manipulate the variables that we can, that we have at our disposal in order to bypass the metabolism. So if you're someone who has been dieting for a long period of time and has had this metabolic adaptation, you're going to have to reverse this process. So, and when it comes to a reverse diet, you have to be very smart, you have to make the correct adjustment and have the know-how to not get fat very quick. So what is the first step? The first step is always going to be giving yourself an initial calorie bump. But how many calories? Is there an exact amount that we need to increase? Is it all guesswork? Do we just have to have a play around with it? Well, I think the answer lies somewhere in between. There's no research showing that you have to increase calories by 500 or by 1000. That number doesn't exist. So if you think that number does exist, get it out of your mind and realize that that number has to come from a little bit of trial and error. When I do my initial calorie increases after a diet, I like to play around with around a 500 calorie starting point. So if I have a client or even myself, and let's say they've ended their diet pretty low at around 1,800 calories, I will give them an initial bump of 500, which means that we're at 2,300 calories every day. Now the likelihood is that they are still in a calorie deficit at this point, and that is absolutely okay. A lot of people will vouch for pushing you up towards maintenance, but let's be real, we don't actually know where this maintenance calories is. So the idea is, is that we spend a few weeks actually finding where you are going to maintain your body weight. So once we've done this initial 500 calorie increase for over the course of a week, we see how the body responds. Does your body weight decrease? Does it stay the same or does it increase? The likelihood is, is that you will actually see a decrease on the scale. And if this happens and you weigh yourself again after seven days, you need to give yourself another calorie increase. After the initial 500 calorie bump, what I like to do is start moving up in increments of 250 calories. This seems to be the sweet spot of not too much, of not too little, and it's enough calories for you to notice a difference, for it to affect appetite, and to give you enough energy. If you start bumping calories up by 500 per week, you actually might be increasing them way too fast, and you might see an increase on the scale too soon. At the end of the day, a reverse diet is designed to get you healthy very quickly, and yes, allow for a little bit of weight gain. But the idea is, is that we're trying to stimulate appetite, stimulate muscle mass, and genuinely just feel good. So what I would say is don't be afraid if you see that the scale goes up, but if it starts to increase drastically and very quickly, then maybe you are adding too many calories too soon. So go with my method, a 500 calorie initial increase and then 250 calorie increases with every adjustment. Now the adjustments are what matter. When do we adjust? When do we add these calories? Now let's use this guideline. If your weight drops by any amount, you add 250 calories. If your weight maintains, then you add 250 calories. If your weight goes up by anything around half a kilo or more, then you maintain the amount of calories that you are eating. 
And if you follow this, I guarantee that week by week, you can add more food, you will feel even better, have more energy, get better pumps, gain more muscle mass, and stay nice and lean after your diet. This is a process that I've followed many times, and it's allowed me to add significant amount of muscle mass and eat a lot of calories at the same time. If you follow this, I guarantee that you won't get it wrong, and I guarantee that you will not get fat too soon. Of course, over time, you are going to have to allow for some fat gain and that is just the nature of a reverse diet and moving into a muscle building phase generally speaking you don't build muscle for too long without having a little bit of fat gain on the side so you have to be okay with seeing that scale increase and realize that is all part of the process you can't lose weight forever i tell this to a lot of my clients at some point the scale has to go up if you're going to see improvements in your physique So I know that after a long, hard, grueling diet, it's very difficult and you can get very tied to what the scale says. But realize that seeing an increase on the scale in a muscle gain phase, as long as you stay within a half kilo or one pound per week, then it is absolutely okay and you are heading in the right direction to see major physique improvements. So part two of this process is what I call the four-week safety net. Now, what is the four-week safety net? It's the amount of time that we have after a diet to not completely mess it up. Everybody is very aware of rebounding after a diet and gaining a significant amount of body weight. This is something that we have to absolutely stay away from. If we're going to stay healthy and we're going to maintain our body fat levels whilst increasing our calories. Now the danger is, is that your appetite is absolutely crazy. You're going to want to eat more and more and you cannot feel satisfied by the amount of food that you're eating. This is going to be a very much a mental battle that you have to deal with. And I recommend keeping your diet identical as it was during your fat loss phase in terms of the foods that you pick. If you suddenly change up your diet and start eating a ton of shitty foods, then that will not help satiate you and I guarantee your hunger will spike even more. We have to stay away from this in order to have a successful reverse diet. So with the four week safety net, we have to allow for a two to three kilo weight gain, or that is around seven or eight pounds maximum to stay within a healthy range and allow for the body to feel good and feel healthy. Within that first month, if we start to gain four, five, six, seven kilos, then we could be heading into dangerous waters and really losing track of our physique. At the end of the day, you don't want to undo all the hard work of a grueling diet. We want to improve upon the physique that we have built, not mess it all up. That would be crazy. So look at this four week safety net as part of your diet. Do not change your mentality your mindset is what matters during this. See it as an extended version of the diet. Once you've gotten through this first four weeks, we can actually begin to relax a little bit. The likelihood is, is your calories are up by 1,000 to 1,500 at this point, and you can start to enjoy more foods that are likely more tasty. At some point, you're going to get bored of eating chicken, rice, fish, pasta, all these kinds of stuff, and you're going to want to start enjoying foods out maybe some takeaways, maybe some chocolate and other sugary or tasty foods. That is absolutely okay. What I would start to employ is the 80-20 rule where we eat 80% of our foods from highly nutritious, highly satiating style of foods and 20% of your food intake coming from foods that you crave or just typically enjoy. With this 80-20 rule, you cannot go wrong. It's just enough of each in order to see improvement but in order to still enjoy your life and have that freedom and flexibility with your diet. If during the reverse diet you stay at 100%, then I guarantee at some point you will fall off and you will binge, unless you just got a crazy mindset, and if so, go for it. So once you've gotten control of your first four weeks, your mindset is good, you've employed the 80-20 rule and your calories are up anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 or maybe for some of you even more. Your body weight is likely stayed level. What do we do at this point? Do we still do the same amount of cardio that we've been doing? Do we do the same amount of steps? Do we keep our training the same? What is the answer to all this? Well, after the first four weeks, I recommend you start to bring your output down ever so slightly. Now for general health and well-being, I always recommend you do some form of cardio every week. This could be two sessions, it could be three sessions, it depends on your preference, what you enjoy, 
and what your schedule allows. If you are doing these cardio sessions, I would definitely limit them to 30 minutes. But generally speaking, if you're doing at least 15 minutes per session, you're probably doing enough. If you're someone who have come from a very high cardio output during your fat loss phase, then you need to be smart about bringing this down. If you have been completing an hour of cardio per day, you don't want to just be slashing this by 70 or 80% as it could become problematic. Just like your reverse diet tapering calories upwards, I recommend tapering your cardio downwards. So per week, I'd recommend bringing that cardio down by one hour. If you're at six hours after four weeks, bring it down to two hours. And generally speaking, you can maintain your cardio between one to two hours per week. It'll keep you lean, it'll keep you fit, and it'll keep you feeling good. For your steps, I guarantee if you're watching this video that they've been very high. And when I say high, I'm talking 10,000 and beyond that. If this is the case, I recommend after the first four weeks, bringing your steps down to around 8,000. If you want to bring them down beyond that number, then the lowest your steps should go, in my opinion, is 6,000. If we're below 6,000 a day, we simply are not walking or moving enough. Remember, general fitness is very important and it isn't all about your physique. If you start to become unfit, this will actually affect your performance in the gym. And plenty of studies out there have shown that people with better cardio have a better capacity for gaining strength and muscle. So make sure that you maintain your steps at six to 8,000 per day, but definitely don't do too many, as by the time you come round to your next fat loss phase, you don't want them starting off too high. So with your reverse diet, you've controlled the amount of calories going in per week. You've got into clear after four weeks and you've controlled your nutrition choices and your amount of output. How long can we keep reversing this diet for? Well, generally speaking, you can keep reversing your calories upwards for as long as your appetite allows or for how comfortable you are with the amount of fat gain. Let's say you put a limit on your fat gain to get up towards 16% body fat. And after that, you don't want to get any fatter. Well, this is when you start your next diet. However, if you've managed to push your calories up to 4,000, maybe you've even required 5,000 calories per day in order to gain any weight, which trust me, does happen, then I recommend you keep pushing the boundaries of what you can achieve with this. At the end of the day, it is your appetite that controls the result. If your appetite dies, then so does your progress. You'll have to do an appetite reset via a mini diet in order to stimulate again so you can then get eating more food and continue to grow. So remember, this is all very personal. How long you want to push your muscle gain phase or reverse diet is completely up to you. Just make sure that you don't do it for too short of a time that you do not see any progress. For example, if you only reverse diet for eight to 12 weeks and then you go into another fat loss phase, that's just not enough time to recover the metabolism and see enough muscle gain to really have any improvements on your physique. I recommend a minimum of six months during this muscle gain phase. It is very important that you follow this and don't fall into this no man's land of progression where you diet, eat more calories, diet, eat more calories and see no progress at all. So I guarantee if you follow this very simple method that I've talked about in today's video, you will successfully reverse out of your diet and be eating a lot of food and staying very lean. A lot of people think they can't do it. I guarantee you can. Follow my 500 and 250 increase style method and watch your results flourish. So guys, if you enjoyed today's video, if you want to see more videos based around fat loss and muscle gain, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. The channel is doing Doing really well right now it'd be nice to see that continue and if you like the video maybe consider giving it a like but for now i will see you in the next video